Hello, welcome to the James Cooley Show. It's your life. I'm your host, Dr. James J.C. Cooley. And guess what today is? It's 360 degree L. And, you know, I got my main man, Dr. Michael Mantell, back with us, uh, co-hosting this again. I I always look forward to Wednesdays because I tell you, we get an opportunity to learn so much from our, our, our special guests that we're going to have on board and and we got we got an absolutely fantastic guest today that's going to teach us a whole lot. How you doing, Doctor Mike? How you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm practicing sitting up straight for our guest today, <laughs> and uh, good to see both of you. I'm delighted, and uh, this is going to be a great, informative, high energy show. I know our guest very well, and she's going to knock it out of the ballpark for us. Man, I'm looking forward to this because, you know, a lot of times though, we have many of us that, you know, work remotely at home, uh, et cetera. I mean, uh, and we sit up in front of the computer, back hurting, everything hurting, and we we don't know when to get up, when to move around, what type of position we need to be in. So I, I'm excited uh, to uh, get educated on that one. But you know what, Doc? We cannot do anything unless we bring... Dr. Michelle Coolin. I mean, she's she's our boss. You know that. How you what? doing, Dr. Coolin? I am doing great, and I'm so excited to hear about this guest today. And um, wow, the things she's talking about it kind of relates to what I'm going through. Actually, I was warned, but I didn't listen. I wanted to sit comfortably, according to Michelle Coolin. And there you go with that. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, I, I'm excited about this. And Michelle, I tell you, why don't you uh, introduce the title of the show, the purpose of the show, and introduce this absolutely fantastic guest. Oh, most definitely. So the title of today's show is Ergonomics and Wellness for In-Office and Remote Workers. So Dr. James Cooley and our guest co-host, Dr. Michael Mantell, have a sit-down conversation with Dr. Chris Hines. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your first name health and wellness professional and orthopedic physical therapist. She's going to talk about anatomy, education, and movement habits and their musculoskeletal impacts, ergonomics equipment and lack of body awareness for proper use, ergonomic solutions that she offers. And she's going to talk about posture cushion products to influence upright posture. Wow. DC-based health and wellness professional, Dr. Hines believes in an active approach to well-being. As a seasoned orthopedic physical therapist, she has worked with many individuals to resolve musculoskeletal complaints, reduce workplace injury, and educate them on recovery and personal injury prevention strategies. This journey includes working with national corporations to reduce workplace injuries by assessing and analyzing workplace environments, implementing exercise-based wellness breaks, lecturing to employee groups and creating job descriptions that highlight musculoskeletal demand. So please welcome to the show and please correct me if I'm mispronouncing your first name, Dr. Chris Hines. Is, is, did I say it correctly? Chris. Chris, Chris okay. thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. How you doing, Dr. Hines? We're so happy to have you here today. And uh, I know we all, I'm talking about um, our viewers from uh over 55 live streaming platform that's tuning in to us right now is looking forward to uh, this education that you're going to teach us. And also just the awareness uh, in case we are doing some of the things uh, partially right, but not 
doing them all the way right. So, uh, so it's important that uh, we know what the right things are. So, welcome to the show, Doc. Welcome to the show. Thank you so Where much. Thank you all for having me. It's nice to meet Dr. Cooley's, both of you, and Michael. Always good to see you. You're the best, Chris. It's so great to have you on. I am flying high that you accepted the opportunity to come on and be generous with your time and share your knowledge and expertise with all of our audience, and especially help us sit up straighter. <laughs> I love that I effect. To... That's usually what happens. I come and people zip up a little all bit. Right. So. <laughs> So let JC and Michelle, let's talk a little bit about how Chris and I got to know each other. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm curious. I, I want to I, I want to hear that. Yeah, Chris, so. you want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we met with a wonderful wellness opportunity with the American uh, Society for Hematology, so the ASH conference, where every year for the last three years we've met in December at this major conference and been a part of the wellness team where we give these 10-minute talks. And in the in-between time of our talks, we, we get to collaborate with the other speakers. Um, you know, I, Dr. Montel's wife is now a great friend of mine as well. But we kind of build off of each other's energy. We take in each other's concepts. And it's always it's just a really exciting process. And year after year, our, our crowd gets bigger and bigger. Well, and just so for the record, Chris, let's make sure that people don't think we're just giving a 10-minute talk. We're giving Correct. this 10-minute talk over uh, constantly back and forth back and forth, over three days <laughs> absolutely and, so, and uh the coolies know paula very well paula's been on the show and she's going to be on again coming up soon so uh it's one great family when you speak to hematologists and oncologists and people in every arena in the world of work especially today as jc said with people working at home at the computer, out with the device, uh, ergonomics and wellness in office and at home become very, very important. Can you talk a little bit about that for us? Absolutely. What I love about my interest and my love of ergonomics and wellness is that it touches everyone. So realistically, it doesn't matter what job you're doing. It's really where we're talking about these sedentary positions that we'll get into, um, these regular habits that we'll physically perform and kind of identifying where we have some gaps in supportive equipment, body awareness, um, movement techniques as well. And so being able to streamline that right now to some of the office desk workers, um, I, I still treat as a physical therapist. So the majority of my population, probably about 90% are computer-based employees. So whether that's working at law firms, in the tech industry, um, you know, I'm in DC, so it's a lot of law firms and attorneys. Um, people are just at the computer. And so I focus there, but it could be someone who's driving all the time, um, just kind of in some static positioning. When you talk about ergonomics, define what that term means. It's a fancy, fancy term. And we're just plain folks. So what's ergonomics mean? <laughs> Sure. So the simplest way to think about ergonomics, it's basically designing your environment to fit you instead of you going into an environment that is already designed. So the goal is that we are going to adapt workstations, equipment, job techniques to make sure that it's compatible with our human anatomy and our physiology to reduce musculoskeletal risk. And so when you talk about people designing their work environment to help fit them, that's a very different mindset um, because a lot of places say, no, this is the way it is. We, we, you don't change. You have to adapt to us. The psychology, the organizational culture of that becomes an important element of what you touch as well. Isn't that true? Oh, absolutely. I mean, for from a physical standpoint, it is the it is a part of inclusion. So, you know, you guys can't tell I'm, I'm about five, three. And I have coworkers that are six five. We're in no way possible going to be able to sit comfortably in the exact same work setup. And so from a corporate standpoint, it's also recognizing that you're gonna have people with all different shapes, sizes, um, pre-existing conditions, and how do we accommodate for that to one, help increase their comfort at work, increase their productivity, reduce work injury, so that they can enjoy life at work and outside of work. So I, uh, one more question, JC, before, uh, before I, I want, this is a little bit different. 
what is someone supposed to do if the workplace won't accommodate for that, those issues? Um, I think it's really important to build some self-awareness. Um, I meet a lot of people in the physical therapy office. And so we start talking about these things and they kind of take ownership and will purchase personal equipment. Um, some corporations will provide funds early on or once every two years for people to buy their own equipment. Um, but it's helpful to have conversation with someone who's knowledgeable and also knowledgeable about that person's body to help ac accommodate them correctly. But it, it is 100% about taking some initiative um, for themselves. And you may use the word inclusiveness. Today, companies must, I don't like that word, but they really would be wise to respect the needs of the people working for them, physically, emotionally, all the way around. And Absolutely. so I, I applaud that you, you know, this effort of yours tremendously. Okay, JC, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? No, 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 no. I'm just getting off into this, Doc. I, I understand. I know, I know. Now, uh, we got about two minutes before the break, but we can start this. Yeah, you, you said that uh, I think sometimes you go and meet with uh, uh, the private sector. I'm talking about professionals that are office at a workplace and teaching them. Why is it so important that um, people are first educated uh, on the comprehension, understanding of human? Uh, uh, anatomy. Uh, I mean, first of all, understanding that before that they can contribute to an understanding of some of the things that they need to do. We got about a minute and a half before the break. Can you can you tell please? That? We'll pick it back Let's up see. after that. <laughs> big um, I, th I think the big one is when I see people come into the office and there's some type of my work posture component. It's been years in the making. Right. So it's not just an acute injury. There's a little bit of a lack of body awareness, a lack of understanding about how our joints move, how our muscles operate with all the joints in our body, what static positioning does to our vascular system, our respiratory system and our musculoskeletal system. And so it builds up over time and people are really confused, like, well, nothing has changed. Why am I having this situation? And we can kind of dig underneath and find that, oh, it's because you did new X, Y, Z when you first started working here. Like that's a major component. And in the corporate sector, we have the opportunity to get to it early. And then also if, if the corporate sector allows is you can keep reassessing and rechecking. Cause I don't know about you guys, but 10 years ago, I wasn't how I am now. And, and then 10 years from now, I'm going to be different again. And my my uh, requirements for being comfortable and having my ergonomics supported might be different. Wow. And and, and neither one of us are the same that we were 10 years ago. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, but as long as we got doctors like you that's going to educate us and just keep us focused and keep our mindset uh, focused on doing the right thing because we are aging. And uh, and if we don't understand the certain things we have to adjust to, we're going to have some problems. You know what? We're going to take a station break. <laughs> and regardless of which platform that you're watching us on, was it E360 television, Transfer TV, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, over 65 live streaming platforms, uh, all you have to do is go to the comments. Ask any questions that you might have. I promise you we'll get you an answer. Yes your life and we'll see you shortly after the break
Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. It's your life and me and my great, great co-host, Dr. Mike Mattel, and our absolutely fantastic guest, Dr. Uh, Chris Hines. Uh, and I tell you, uh, she she's on fire already. And, and we haven't even got got started uh, yet. Uh, but uh, it's, it's good to understand that you have professionals that understands a whole lot of things as relate to our posture, uh, our position, our back alignments, and things that we take for granted and we don't know why we have these type of issues. And a lot of them come from the muscle skeleton because, you know, we first have to understand how it functions. <laughs> and if we don't do the right thing, the right stretching, the right movements, the right that, we're going to have some issues and that's why i brought up the question prior to that about the anatomy uh but i want to go a little deeper uh dr chris is how does the comprehension understanding of human analogy contribute to recognizing and preventing muscle uh skeleton issues caused by poor movement and habits can you tackle that one yeah, that's a great question. Um, physical therapists in general, we do the cadaver anatomy class and, and a lot of our schooling is anatomy. Um, when we're treating patients, we're kind of working through that process with them. And it's no different than treating a patient versus looking at some of these work positions. When I understand my anatomy, I can understand and identify vulnerable areas within the body. So I can recognize inefficient or harm, harmful movement patterns. Um, that we repeat all the time. Um, I can assess areas of weakness, dysfunction, um, whether there is excessive stability or a lack of stability, mobility, and then I can target my intervention for those things. So it kind of provides a framework for global and individual education as well as we work to combat some of these discomforts um, and try to mitigate some of these issues that tend to come up over time. So it's very helpful um, to understand anatomy and also physiology. And so I'm going to this on here because my 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 biggest thing is the only place that the mind and body are separate are in books. So when I think about anatomy, I'm I'm thinking about our neural pathways, our lungs. If I'm slumped over and slouched, I'm not utilizing all of my lung volume. And if I'm not getting in enough oxygen, I don't know a cell in our body that doesn't need that. What do you think is going to happen to my productivity and my attention? Right. And if that's happening, what kind of mood might I be in? Right. So it's all ties together. Everything impacts everything. Um, and so that's anatomy is and physiology is essential. And this is why Chris and I are paired up speaking at conferences like the American Society of Hematology, because the mind and the body, as you say, Chris, are one. And so if we inflame ourselves with all kinds of irrational thoughts and make ourselves angry or depressed or worried or fearful, that's impacting our body. And we're not able to move in a healthy way and feed back to our mind. So I want to ask you a question about the notion of sitting too long. Many of us who wear the Apple Watch, not there's not an ad for an Apple Watch, but many of us who wear these watches, it'll tell us uh, how long we've been sitting, time to stand up and so forth. So what are some of the implications for our musculoskeletal system of prolonged sitting? And what should we be aware of? What is reasonable about that? Yeah, sure. It's it's a really good question. I've, I've been seeing some imagery online where, you know, they'll have the chair, like you remember like a cigarette was the new death and now we've got the office chair that's like the new coffin. Um, and so, <laughs> The issue is, is our bodies are made for movement. Movement is medicine. So as a physical therapist, I can certainly stand behind the best thing that we can be doing is moving as often as we can and in varying degrees. Um, but when we can't, when we have to be in these static positions, we have to remember to move. So when we're sitting for hours on end, depending on the posture, but some of us have some, some comfortable ones that we tend to get into, whether we're crossing our legs, slouched over, leaning down on the, on the uh, laptop on the couch type of position, is that we're training our body to be physically in a particular position. So if we take that typical slouch position and I'm rounding my shoulders, my head is forward um, and my hips are tucked under, right? So I'm gonna make my hips tight, which could lead to some other dysfunctions. My shoulders are gonna be tight and out of balance. So if I wanna go do an exercise, I can injure myself there. Um, I'm gonna, 
possibly have some neck tension, shoulder tension, headaches, jaw issues. Just from that sitting position, our bodies are meant to move. We are elastic beings. And so it's just like a rubber band. If you let a rubber band sit for too long, it gets dry and it starts to crack, right? And so we need to lubricate ourselves as much as possible and keep moving around because it's a lot of things can stem from inactivity from musculoskeletal, nervous system, uh, cardiovascular system, blood flow decreases, blood flow gets a little sluggish when we're static. Um, the, the, the impact is really widespread. So are there specific strategies that we can use to uh, help us maintain optimal alignment and balance? Um, is, there a, is there an optimal amount of time uh, we should get up and move around? How frequently? That's probably one of the hardest questions on finding the optimal time. And I think that because of how we work, I think ideally we don't work at desks. You know, we're up and, and on the go and that's really just not reality. And so the optimal time is, is every time you can find a moment that you're getting up to do at least something, whether that is every meeting I take, I'm gonna stand up, especially if I don't have to talk. If I'm just reading something, I'm gonna stand up or I've got a walking treadmill or I'm gonna go take meetings with people in the office while we walk or stand during meetings, kind of having some of those moments are gonna be really helpful. Um, but as far as strategies go, if I think about just sitting, um, I'm thinking about upper cross post posture, right? So the rounded shoulders, forward head, uh, the tight hips in the back, which is um, lower body cross posture, is I've got to strengthen my back. I've got to strengthen my neck. I've got to stretch my chest, stretch my hip flexors. I got to strengthen my glutes. So that, that's some of like the physical programming that we can do is like, the equal and opposite motion. So our, our lives are forward. And that's, it doesn't really matter what you do. Our lives are forward. It's doing a lot more things backwards. We have a question for you. In fact, we have so many questions for you. It's incredible. You are a superstar. So one of the questions is this, what's a good stretch routine that one could start when experiencing muscle fatigue throughout the workday, specifically for the neck and shoulder? Oh, great question. Um, I will go first to the ergonomic setup. So first I'm checking into how big is the font on your screen? If it's so small that you're leaning forward, that font needs to be a bit bigger, right? Reduce some of the eye strain, which could be bothering some of the neck. Um, we need to make sure that your monitor, especially where you're looking at on the screen is relatively across from your eyes. So we're not doing too much of this. We're not doing too much looking down, poking that head out like a chicken. So elevating that, and also making sure that you're sitting on your sit bones, right? So sit on your sit bones, have some good back support and let your body do your job with less effort. Now, after that, we can start going into some stretch routines where we know that our neck is a cylinder. So we've got 360 degrees where we can start to do some movement. So in particular stretching, I like to do what's called active isolated stretching. So it's always an active movement with a little bit of overpressure. So to give you an example, and you can do this in any which direction, if I actively take my ear down, I'm still going actively, I'm gonna give a little bit of overpressure and come right out of it. I'm not gonna hold for a, a moment or two there. Coming back over. And if I change my direction, I can go down, I can go up. We have so many degrees of freedom around our neck. Most people are gonna be really sore and tight in the upper traps, and that's gonna be ear to opposite shoulder or the levator in the back. So recognize I'm going to the back of the body again. And that's chin to opposite armpit. We'll get the levator as well. Wow, we, we got Chris, Christina. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, she was a patient of yours, uh, probably still am. She's like, Dr. Hyman, your posture cushion changed my life. I was in so much pain from working at the computer all day, neck pain, back pain, and since using the cushion, uh, I have so much less discomfort. What cushion is he talking about? Oh, thank you, Christina. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I'm so happy that it's helping you. <laughs> um, so this is a, it's a labor of love and a product of having patients during the COVID lockdown period where I was saying the same thing over and over and over and in that slouch position. And so what I developed is a wedge cushion. So it's got a coccyx cut out for the tailbone. Bring it pressure. over just a little bit more. Bring it over a little. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
yeah. Oh, so yeah. coccyx yeah. cut out uh, to decrease pressure to the lower spine, um, take pressure off the ligaments around the tailbone, but also it is wedge shaped. So the back of this cushion is a little bit taller than the bottom. And so what that does is it's gonna elevate your hips above your knees. So when your hips are above your knees, you're gonna take a little bit of pressure off your low back. You're gonna give yourself the opportunity to sit on your sit bones, which is where we should be sitting and not on our tailbones. And when we do that, so even if you just do that in your chair right now, just kind of arch your back a little bit to get on your sit bones, you're naturally gonna elevate your spine and be a little bit more upright and it'll be much more difficult to slouch forward. Where would people find this cushion? I mean, you, you just snuck that one in on us, Doc. Uh, <laughs> where, uh, where can they get this cushion? <laughs> so currently, you can find it on my website. It's www.khergowellness.com. And they're also coming to Amazon very soon. Congratulations. My Thank wife, you. Paula, Thank has you. one of these, JC. Oh, okay. And she swears by it. And uh, we recommend it to lots of people. And... Uh, Christina is not the only one who's a big fan of this cushion. Um, and it sounds like someone else has the same product. It's phenomenal. Such a simply, such a simple thing with major impact. Great. Well, I, I am sure that uh, Michelle is, is, is um, she's still here. She's watching this and <laughs> she's probably thinking about this cushion. She's got a question <laughs> for She's got a question for us. Uh-oh. Get ready, Chris. All right. Michelle's got a question. You know, so. So, uh, so this this oh. cushion you saying it's going to be coming to Amazon real soon? Yeah, but it's and, currently uh, available on my website, and it's up on Amazon. Okay. I'm just kind of working out the navigation of it. Uh, so, uh, what are the major major benefits? I'm talking about, I know you just named some uh, from using this, other than you know the tailbones or sitting back back. Does uh, I mean, do you sleep with it at night? Do you? or only just sit with it or whatever that is. Yeah, so most people are, are just sitting with this. And so sitting um, with their office set up, sitting in airplanes, um, sitting in cars, any kind of vehicle, um, also bleachers, we gotta go to a kid's program, um, theater seats as well. So anywhere where we're sitting is where I'm finding people sitting in these and the typical medical conditions that I'm seeing that feel much better with this, um, sciatica, hip impingement, so hip, hip joint pain in the front, um, some of the, the patellofemoral pain, which is knee pain while sitting down um, and for long periods of time, back pain, neck pain, shoulder discomfort, headaches, jaw tension. So a lot of people, particularly related to work, they're just having more energy throughout the day because they're not working so hard against gravity from that slouch position and trying to, to operate. We have another comment from... Uh... I think it's Sincotia Belenfanti. She says, this cushion is life-changing. I have one that travels with me, but I'm going to purchase another one so I don't have to take this home every day. Now, <laughs> the cushion is fantastic. We all know that, and we love it. And there's Michelle. And Michelle, have, it, have, have at Chris. <laughs> Can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. There we go. Um, do we need a break, James, or we're good? Yeah, we go. Uh, I tell you what. Why don't you ask the questions after the break? Because this is this is so interesting, and uh, I don't want to miss anything. Right. Yeah. So what we what we gonna do? Hey, we gotta take a station break. We gotta pay the bills. Yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna take a station break, but we're gonna come back. We got so many people that want to ask you these questions, and I tell you what, keep them coming in. Keep them coming in. Uh, let's get educated on this. Uh, we 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 got we got a professional. Well, actually, all of us, but we got someone that really knows, and I want to know a little bit more about that that cushion uh, because uh, Michelle and I are getting ready to do a whole lot of travel real soon, and this cushion might help us out. So I tell you what, if you want to be part of this conversation, all you have to do is just go to the platform that you're watching us on, and I promise you, I, I promise you, we'll get you an answer. Remember, it's your life, and we'll see you shortly after the break.
What if that road that you're taking is a dead end? What if love leaves you all jaded and broken? What if that limb breaks your climb now on? Yeah, what if it all goes wrong? That road is a beautiful soul drive What if that love ends up lasting a lifetime What if that limb holds you oak tree strong What if this time nothing goes wrong to know who you are and once you know who you are you truly know who you are love who you are love who you are your masterpiece love who you are love who you were born to be love love me some me that's what i'm talking about when you leave high school you gotta know today or tomorrow, or hopefully today, what your plans are. Hopefully, you know, there is no bad decision unless there is no plan. Create, collaborate, commit with confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. Commit with what? Confidence. And everything that you do. Hello, welcome back to James Cooley Show. It's your life. And I'm sitting back here laughing because uh, that cushion uh, you invented has opened up the uh, It done opened up. I'm looking at the numbers here. <laughs> and uh, we, we got lots and lots of questions that, 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 I mean, you done caught somebody's attention, a lot of people's attention. Uh, <laughs> you know, so. I, I want to pick it back up with that. I know you was explaining that, and I know Michelle got a question as well. So, okay. so hey, Doc, how, how you think it's going so far, Doctor Mantel? Oh, this is this is uh, as good as I would have predicted because I know Chris is a sparkle of fire, and look what's happening. We get we're getting questions. People want all, all kinds of ways to stretch and what other equipment I should get. And we'll let this go, but right now, Doctor Michelle Cooley has a question. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manto. Dr. Hines. Um, wow. Uh, so um, is every product and this is I'm, I'm going through personal experience. So for a long time, bad posture, sad the desk. I sat on my right leg 
you know, that was mm. more comfortable for me. And then I was warned, didn't listen. I listened for a little bit, then went back to uh, what was comfortable for me. Um, I've used, um, and, I, and I'm going to see amazing things about your product, about the cushion. But is it, what do you suggest as far as, may, are there additional products to use besides the cushion to get your back right? Like what if you have, let's say, nerve damage or arthritis and like uh, lumbar issues that's just pressing against this um, one side of your um, back in my case. So what are your thoughts on that, especially specific products? That's a really great question. And that's really where I come in with some of my physical therapy expertise. So just like if someone comes in with a rotator cuff tear, um, mm-hmm. I don't treat everyone the exact same way. People don't respond the exact same way. And that's the same with identifying the proper ergonomic setup. So when we talk about back pain, I mean, that could be a gamut of things. Are we talking the SI joint? Are we talking lumbar? Is there a neural component? Is it the disc? What's the symptomology, right? And so when I start thinking about that, there are several different products that I recommend to people and they're not my products, but it's what's gonna work best for that person. So ideally we're trying to optimize the station for you. And I think that there are some global concepts that are that are pretty universal to people. Sitting down is bad. The computer, if we're using a mouse a lot, we can hurt our wrist, get carpal tunnel, hurt our elbows, head, neck, et cetera. When we start getting into individual preferences, like sitting on the leg and very specific medical conditions, that it can always take a turn. And I like to say this as well is we're people. We are human beings, we are creatures of habit, we are creatures of comfort. And so I'm I'm never gonna suggest absolutely stop doing something, but we mm-hmm. do have to fill our toolbox with some other equipment, movement patterns and habits that will mitigate some of those comfortable things that we do that are lo- no longer healthy or helpful for us because we, we'd be fighting the subconscious, right? And that is really difficult to do. But if we put more information in your toolbox, find you new positions of comfort, you can start to habituate those things, then that's where we kind of make progress in that. But yeah, this, the equipment can range from anything that's supporting the foot to sitting different types of chairs, different types of cushioning, sit to stand desks, monitors. I mean, you name it, they've got it. Why is it important? I know social media is great, YouTube videos. Why is it important if someone's experiencing these issues that they get a medical professional to diagnose them, to work with them? Because like you said, one size doesn't fit all, everyone is different. For instance, in my case, I looked at the video, I did the child's pose, went to PT, they're like, "Uh uh-uh, you can't lean forward based on your um, specific um, condition. That hurts and that's gonna make it worse. So how important is it, even though videos are out there, to get a medical diagnosis first? Yeah, it's, it's super important, even if it's just from a physical standpoint. A lot of physical therapy practice now are, are direct access where you, it doesn't require a physician and you can mm-hmm. go in and get an assessment. And really what you could say, when I think about health and wellness, like what that means to me is quality of life. So each individual has an idea of what their quality of life is. And like, if you want to do yoga, if you want to run a 5K, um, you like to do the Peloton 10 days a week, (laughs) essentially, right? It's um, how can we make sure that you can keep doing those things safely, right? So even with a back condition, I have people that do child's pose, but maybe we have to work around to get get to that point. And that's where it becomes important because I think people give up on stuff too soon um, and they don't work around around some of their dysfunctions. So you get that perspective where it's being individualized towards you and you have someone that's willing to work with you that's like, okay, you want to do this. Let's see what we can do and what what are the best, what's the best pathway for you to get there. Thank you. So we, we, we mentioned different kinds of equipment and whatnot. I know that in the physical therapy that I'm going to now for my fractured knee, um, so he has pulled out a Theragun machine, uh, you know, uh, massage thing and electrostim. And uh, we use a stretch cage, that true stretch cage and things like that. But oftentimes it comes down to very simple things like just st- learning d- new stretches. But one thing I've been reading about, and it is 
this is going to sound silly to you, I know, but lotions and oils, everything from Voltaren to EMU to CBD lotions. What do you think about all that stuff? Any of that? Do you recommend any of that? Um, I, I don't personally recommend it, but I'm not against it. Like if a patient brings that up, um, you can absolutely use it. It's the same with the massage gun. I love the massage guns. And the question, this question is so great is because does it make you feel better so that you have more function? So for me, it doesn't matter to me if it actually works or if it's a placebo, like that's one right. of the brain's greatest gifts is like, I put this gel on and I could go dance at my daughter's wedding. The gel is perfect at that point, uh, <laughs> right. you know, like, and, and I do believe in some of those gels. I personally just don't recommend them. Most of my patient population right. will bring them to me or, or they're already using them. Yeah. One of the questions that we have from Steve Taylor is uh, what is a good stretch for hip flexors? So many people complain about, you know, tight hip flexors. What, what any thoughts about that? Stop sitting so much is my first answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stretching into the hip flexor, you can do any type of lunge type of stretching. A really important one, so when you think about the hip flexor, we also have our psoas muscle that can, connects our lumbar spine to the front of our hips, so it crosses our abdominal. So if you do a staggered stance and just raise your arms up like you're on a roller coaster and lean back, you're going to stretch through a lot of your hip, hip flexor that's in the abdominal area. And any type of quad stretching is also going to do a similar thing there. Um, I'm a big fan of the couch stretch, and it's the very deep, intense quad stretch uh, for people that have really tight hip flexors. So what is that? So the couch stretch, it was developed that you could basically have your knee on the seat of the couch and your foot on the back of the couch. So you're kind of in a lunge, and you're trying to lean backwards, and people do this on the wall as well. So you're basically kneeling on a knee with your foot tucked up to your butt and trying to get, trying to get your body upright. So it's a very intense front body opener there. And I think that JC is going to show us how to do that in just a moment, right, JC? <laughs> uh, and just oh a my moment. God, this is great. You know, we're going to take a break, but uh, we're going to come back. Christina uh, got another question uh, that I think that is so important that we need to answer. Uh, but uh, hey, hey, Dr. Mike and, and Dr. Chris, we got to take this uh, this last break, and uh, when we get Good. back, we're going to dive off into this even more. So. If you want to be part of the conversation, all you have to do is go to the platform that you're watching us on. Ask any questions that you might have. I promise you we'll get you an answer. But uh, during the break, I want everybody to smile. Just smile. Just smile because Dr. Chris is putting it down. So we'll see you shortly after the break. I've seen a smile convey I love you. I'm proud of who you are. One that keeps us close when we're apart Walking from the darkness of all that we've been through It seems that there might be A way to leave behind the loneliness we've known And live again
Hello, I'm Dr. James J.C. Cooley from the United States of America, and I am here to just say, first of all, I'm so happy and honored to be on it, to be in the Coffee Book 2023, Unified Brain Z and other organizations. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to uh, be a part of this collection. Hello, welcome back to the James Cooley Show. And Dr. Mike, man, you 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 chose an absolutely extraordinary guest uh, for our show today. Thank you. And and Dr. Chris, thank you, thank you. You know what? I, I tell you, Dr. Mike always hit a home run. <laughs> <You> know? <laughs> I know that to be true. Uh, thank you so much for having thank, me. Thank you. And he hit a grand slam this time. I mean, not just a regular home, or but a grand slam. You know, so uh, we you are putting it down, and these questions are still coming in, and we still got to answer those questions. Uh, but uh, I want to start off with um, one thing. I'm going to turn it back over to Dr. Mike after this. Okay. okay so, uh, Chris, um, what type of mindset does somebody need to adjust to or confirm to? in order to overcome certain things like, I don't want to see a physical therapist. I don't want to see a doctor. I don't want to see a mental health person. I don't want to do all these things because I, 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 I got it all in my head. And if you don't have the right mindset in your head, uh, and not all about you because when you get used to certain things and you are used to them, might not make any sense to anybody else. And there is no growth. There is no yeah. way to uh, make you better or get you better because uh, you locked into, I, I, I like to say it, your own little kingdom. And you, you kind of like the emperor running around with no clothes on. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what are your thoughts on that? I think you have to have a mindset of curiosity. Right. Is if if our body is talking to us all the time. So pain, discomfort, all those things are little messages. Um, it doesn't always mean that something is major, but it's pulling your attention for some reason. Um, and so if you're getting a little bit curious, let's say you're not ready to go to the doctor. I know tons of people like this is YouTube is a great resource. Like get on your social media, see what people are doing, and you can start to try things. And of course it would be against medical advice, but get curious enough about your own body to stop something before it's major. And I think curiosity is a major mindset that people have to have, move differently, be open to new ideas, be open to testing yourself. Um, you know, can you get off the ground without using your hands? And when you can't like, oh man, that makes me think about being 80 years old and what will I be able to do if I'm, you know, 20 now? Um, and just kind of, just getting really curious about yourself and about your body. It's important in between visits to a physical therapist to do the homework. If so, if you see a physical therapist a couple of times a week, in between, you're supposed to be doing those exercises. Can you talk about that for a moment? Yeah, the first thing I'm going to say is when you don't do your exercises, we always know. <laughs> right. so just just know that we always know. Um, but yeah, with, with physical therapy, a lot of people are seeing a PT maybe one to three times a week for an hour. Um, man, how many hours are in a week? Right? That's what we're fighting. You're fighting all that time out of, out of that PT office where you're getting three hours and, and seven days. And I think about that with ergonomics, too, is like, all right you think that me working on your neck is going to fix things and you won't address your desk that you're going to be in for the next 20, 30 years. Like that is a part of the process. So you are fighting gravity 24 seven. And that's where a lot of these issues will come from. And when you're having an injury, there's a process going on in your body 24 hours a day. And it can be related to inflammation, pain, dysfunction, and your body can remember that and keep it. And so in order to go back to improved function, you've got to be working on it more often than you think. Uh, Christina Murray has asked the question, what's the benefit to a company to offer ergonomic assessments proactively instead of reactively? 
Uh, any thoughts about that? Yeah, this is a fantastic question. Thank you, Christina. Um, overall, I think corporations are doing a really good job of providing ergonomic equipment. Um, I think there is a, a, a like a trust gap. So I think that there's a trust given to employees that they are aware of their bodies and will set set these, this equipment up appropriately. And great, we have mitigated some musculoskeletal risk. And I can't tell you how many times I go into an office that has adequate equi equipment and the person goes, oh, I didn't know my chair could do this. Oh, I didn't know the desk could do this. I didn't know how to set up the desk. Um, so there's an opportunity to really onboard people onboard. with ergonomic assessment with the equipment that's already available, where you're teaching them how to use it, how to set up that equipment appropriately for um, a sitting environment. If they're sit to stand desk, we can set the desk right away. Like this is the appropriate height for your standing. And these are the things that you could be doing in between time. So you're setting it up with tools right away, like in this work environment. And so that, and giving them resources, education on how the, all of the equipment works. So that way you're, you're actually mitigating things instead of trusting people, including myself, that are not aware of their bodies all the time and giving them that, that education. Very interesting. Chris, are, what, what should our audience be aware of in terms of the training and education that a physical therapist uh, it must have? Yeah, for a physical therapy degree, um, you have to have an undergraduate degree, degree and uh, three years of doctoral um, education and a degree, so a doctorate degree and then continuing education for as long as you practice. So depending on the state, it could be up to 30, 40 hours of continuing education um, every two years. And for people who are beginning, um, they, they start thinking about goals and they read things in articles and you know on, on social media and they see things on the internet. How can the average person pick out what's myth versus reality when it comes to fitness and ergonomics and movement that's a that's a tough one because as like as a connoisseur of information i i run into those pitfalls as well and you know medicine is the practice of medicine so it's kind mm -hmm. of uh, the nature of the beast to like take in information read the research articles try to implement things um figure out what types of people they work for which types of people that they don't um and that's that's a really hard place to go but it is it is a little bit of a trial and error but what you can do is have your network like hey you got your knee replaced where did you go did you have a great outcome right like mm -hmm. oh you've had this hip issue what do you do like we both work at the desk right like this is not even medical but we both to the computer how are you feeling during your work day and actually having those real honest vulnerable conversations um with the people in your circle to gather information because most of us we're, human nature is to be anecdotal and so mm -hmm. we're going to take the experience and word of mouth from someone first and get referred to places that that might suit us a little bit better and to information that might work for us wow you, you know uh dr chris i hope i can call you dr chris so i'll call Please. you doctor uh you have brought so much insight uh, mm -hmm. to e uh, 306 degrees of help, not just Dr. Mike and myself, but to all our listeners and all our viewers. I got to invite you back on again if you got time. I mean, I know you're probably so busy you ain't got time. I I I I, I did this as a favor of Mike, but <laughs> but uh, don't let all these viewers and all these listeners down. We no, I would to love to come thing. back. We're having so much fun. <laughs> We're having a lot of fun. You got great information. We'll have you back for sure. We'll be in yeah, touch. So, so we're out of time for this one, but I, I tell you, absolute pleasure. I, um, I, I, Dr. Mike, just like I always tell you, man, you pick the best. <laughs> yes, thank you. You bring them on. And, and Chris, thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking time out of your welcome. schedule to come back home. Dr. Mike is going to be reaching out to you again. Oh, okay. Perfect. You got time. Dr. Mike, you already know how I feel about you. Uh, oh, you already know very that. mutual. You know that. You and yeah, Michelle yeah. are our favorites. You know, we got to th we got to thank Dr. Michelle Cooley for putting together another uh, superb show. She's an executive producer. She writes everything. She do it all. You know, so I, I got to thank her. Most importantly, I have to thank our viewers and our listeners for tuning into 
the J.C. Cooley uh, It's Your Life show, Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I want everybody to always keep this in mind. Dream big. Think big. And be big at everything you do. We'll be back tomorrow. Same time. Same place. It's your life. We'll see you then.